Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadston with Florida's Fourth Estate. Sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic edition of Florida's Fourth Estate. I know we always say every edition is fantastic, but we really, really, really mean it this time. We are going to drop some knowledge on you that is going to be mind-blowing. And it's about a place. Okay, I'm going to tell you what the name of the place is without <laughs> saying the name of the place. It The name means Sea to Lake. We talk about it all the time on the news. We hear about it all the time on the news. If someone mentions it, we think we know about it, but we really don't. I do you know what we're talking G- about? Ginger, Mar a Lago. You are da- you danced around it for a minute there. Uh, <laughs> it is Mar a Lago. It, it's oh probably gosh. I think it's safe to say the most talked about piece of real estate yes. on planet Earth, not just in Florida, in America, on planet Earth. The history behind this place. So when we set up this interview, I started diving into the history of it, and it just blew my mind. Went down several rabbit holes. like an onion. Layer after layer after layer. Just when you think you can't be surprised, boom, there's another fact. Yeah, and the way things have worked out, it's just crazy. And so we have brought in someone I'm very excited to have on the show. She is a UCF professor. She also wrote a book about Mm Mar-a-Lago called American (laughs) Castle. Uh, you should definitely check it out. Her name is Mary Shanklin. She worked for the Orlando Sentinel for a really long time. And we are so excited to have you on our show, Mary. Thank you very much. I um, I, I love how you were able to cast, um, not just geographically where it was, um, from the sea to the lake, Ginger, um, but also how, um, it, I, I, I agree with you. Um, is there another house on the planet Earth that, that we hear more about? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't no. think so at all. And, and the history that I never knew about, the fascinating things that's happening today in the news, we're going to talk about all of that all on of this it. show. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mary, let's just start out with why you decided to write this book. What caught your interest about Mar-a-Lago in the first place? Well, um, I think a little bit like you, I, I'm very interested in real estate. And um, I feel like any journalist who's been covering the state of Florida for any time, um, that that's, you know, just really such a huge part of the economy here. So, you know, Mar-a-Lago kind of came on my radar about the time it was going to be um, considered, you know, possibly a winter White House. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, kind of became, you know, a little interested in, in you know, what is this place? I had driven by it. Um, I had, had um, known about it, but it wasn't until I found a um, National Park Service forum they were talking about this time when Mar-a-Lago had um, actually belonged to all of us um, as part of the National Park Service. And then it went on to um, cast how it came to be that and then how it suffered um, the the rare humiliation of of being um, delisted. So um, it was just, uh, that was kind of my portal into a rabbit hole where I I hung out for about four years. Oh my. Yeah, that is, you know, so take us back and start from, you know, the best place to start is from the beginning. Mar-a-Lago is about to be a hundred years old, but it wasn't always owned by Donald Trump, right? And so Marjorie Merriweather Post is the person who had it built. Tell us a little bit about her and what her intention was. Anybody who's ever opened up a box of Post cereal um, has probably done their share to contribute to the finances that bankrolled Mar-a-Lago. Um, Marjorie Merriweather Post was the only child of C.W. Post who um, who really came up with Post cereal. Really realized how, uh, with advertising, um, you know, you can differentiate yourself. So, so it took off. Um, it um, became um, unbelievably successful. Um, Marjorie Merriweather Post. Um, she she married an attorney, um, but then um, after probably about fifteen years, they divorced, and then um, she um, pretty quickly married um, someone who a lot of your viewers probably have heard of, um, E. F. Hutton. Um, I think you know there was the old right when when um, E. F. Hutton speaks. Uh, people yeah. listen. And then he was so financially astute um, that he realized that you could take um, take the the basis of post serials 
and and do acquisitions, go public with it, um, you know, leverage things, economies of scale, and and so then that ended up becoming what we now know as as General Foods, um, you know, really a conglomerate of of so many things, and so. Uh, this is all to say that um, that's the type of financial background that it would take um, to to build this, um, you know, as, as Ginger said, the sea to the lake on 17 acres. Marjorie Merriweather Post, at the time she was looking for it, had to be in Palm Beach. That's where they wintered. That's where everybody of power and, and means went, um, you know, to go, you know, that's where you, you build your relationships and, and do your, you know, kind of, you know, gain trust with people. And um, that's that's where it all happens in Palm Beach. So um, so she decides that, you know, she needs to build um, this this massive um, this massive place to really cement their their position in, in Palm Beach. Back then. It sounds like she paid about $7 million to get it the way she wanted between the land. Yes. They shipped in stones from overseas and tiles from Cuba, and they sunk a lot of money. And I want you to remember that number of $7 million in the 1920s, <laughs> because that is going to come into play later, that same number. But she really, what was she looking for in a house when she was putting this monstrosity together? Yeah. This is such a good question uh, that, you know, you know, to really is establish yourself in, in Palm Beach, you know, you want it to be this, this um, not just a, a, a stately regal place, but you also want to host all the big parties. Um, you know, you want to have the big dinners, you know, you want it to be a fun place. And, and those two things um, really, really um, fought against one, one another. I've never been. I've only seen it on TV. You've been. What yeah. has? What did your impression when you go in and you know what she was trying to accomplish and the way you see it now? Yeah, I tell you, Ginger, I was so fortunate um, because through an assignment, um, I was able to not only go to Mar-a-Lago, but I got a tour from um, the architect who'd been there all during the Trump um, the Trump ownership period, um, Rick Gonzalez of West Palm Beach. And so he was able to walk me through, you know, the changes that had taken place since then. So not only did I get to see it, you know, with the fresh eyes of, of somebody who's never seen it before, but then I got to layer on that, you know, well, how it did change from the Marjorie Merriweather post era. But I, I will tell you, um, I, I, I'm pretty confident that um, I would say that if you ever get the opportunity to go, it, you know, you, you walk in through these, it's an arched doorway on um, these grill work front doors. It opens up into a, a um, kind of a, a greeting room um, to make it sound pedestrian. And, and the walls are so covered with um, like all these etchings and, and Spanish lanterns and fireplaces and then you walk into the next room which is much more expansive it's that experience that we've always had when you walk into a room that's got somewhat of a low ceiling and then you walk into the big deal and it's more dramatic the ceiling is higher and in this room the ceiling is everything it's it's um it's gold leaf it's this thousand wing ceiling it's um modeled after um one in venice and um, it's, you know, you'll, you'll, there, there just will never be another one like that. I'm curious because, you know, everything gets politicized today. Uh, yes. You hear Republicans say mar a Lago's uh, such a beautiful, amazing place. You hear Democrats say it's gross, it's crawling with roaches. I'm curious as to when you went there, unbiased opinion, how was the place? Did it feel luxurious and clean or did it feel roach infested and old? What what was the feeling in there? Yeah, I, I would say, um, you know, the people who are um, paying a quarter of a million dollars to become members there, um, they, they, they're they um, probably getting a bang for, for their buck. I, I felt like it looked immaculate. I felt like the furnishings, um, if not from that original era, which probably they weren't, um, you know, they were tastefully done. Um, you know, a lot of the um, original artwork um, was still on the walls. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, was going on in the kitchen or anything, but 
Um, you know, what, what, what you could see the, the signature public places and spaces. And, and I'll tell you, I, um, I got to my, my interview a little early and, and I was able to kind of wander around a little bit on my own. And um, I, I feel like it's, you know, really been preserved and, and maintained and, and kept well. Still to come, we're checking out how former President Donald Trump was able to secure this property for such a good deal and the court case now surrounding the house. Welcome back to Florida's Fourth Estate. We've been peeling back the curtain on one of the most famous homes in Florida, if not the country. We're talking to a local author about Mar-a-Lago, or what former President Trump used to call his winter White House. Donald Trump came to own Mar-a-Lago in 1985. How did that come about? And where does that $7 million million price tag come into play? I had to read this part like four (laughs) times because I couldn't believe the the move he made to get a a price cut on this thing is crazy. So uh, give it to us, Mary. The, the way that um, Trump came to purchase this is um, it's it's possibly my favorite story in the book. Um, so it, it had become, um, you know, uh, the federal property. Um, it, it belonged to us. It um, was part of the National Park Service. And then um, there was a lot going on, a lot of competing interests that basically pushed it out. Um, one was that the people who lived in Palm Beach, they lobbied hard to get this public use um, off of their exclusive island, which you know they call the people of the island the colony. Um, you know they wanted it out, and That's then um, by, yes, by um, that time, um, Marjorie Merriweather Post. Um, she she had died thinking that she had left Mar-a-Lago to the federal government. The heirs um, needed some cash, which they could get um, by selling Mar-a-Lago. Um, the people of Palm Beach they didn't you know want any part of you know having tourists um, you know come on on their island. So it um, was divested. Marjorie Merriweather Post heirs went through a couple different prospective buyers. And then um, Donald and Ivana Trump came in. Legend goes that he and Ivana um, were just like hanging out in Palm Beach and um, they, they got a chauffeur to take them around and ask the chauffeur, you know, well, you know, what's the, the best um, piece of property that um, we, we could buy here? And um, and that's how they, they showed up at, um, on South Ocean Boulevard. So tell me if this story is true, because I read this on Wikipedia, and I'm not sure if I believe it or <laughs> oh, not. Oh, boy. Uh, so I need you to fact check this. It says Trump first, so it was on the market for like $20 million, right? It says Trump offered $15 million. They rejected it. And then they said that Trump purchased a piece of land near Mar-a-Lago that would screw up their view if he if he built some big mansion and then they say that's how he got them that that lost all the interest in the property and then they ended up taking seven million for it is that how it really went when donald trump went to purchase it he was purchasing for seven million dollars um the mar-a-lago that exists from south ocean boulevard to lake worth which is the intercoastal waterway and the um the heirs the marjorie merriweather post trust that so needed cash, um, they they um, had sold off an oceanfront parcel, interestingly, to um, a man who had been, um, I think the- um, The KFC heir? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you, you have done your homework. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and so he had he had to, to buy that because, you know, Mar-a-Lago is not gonna be sea to the lake um, if you right. don't own the, the oceanfront parcel. So, um, you know, it kind of was a package deal, but it didn't really establish itself as part of that um, original, like in, in, in the book and his writings when he talks about it, that $7 million. I think, I think the oceanfront parcel might have gone for $2 million. Mm-hmm. So like a total investment of $9 million for, for that property. I want to mm-hmm. talk about the nitty gritty here. A lot of people want to know what the deal is with the club. So you mentioned earlier in our interview quarter of a million dollars just to get you in the door and then maybe 14,000 ish per year after that. I was looking at what you don't get though, which surprised me. Uh, You don't get, that's not included golf. Uh, You have to pay for food separately. You're not invited to the parties. 
you don't get access. You you still have to get invited by the people who are throwing parties. You get air. You still you still have to pay for spa services. So for a quarter of a million dollars, that basically gets you in the door. And what happens from there is kind of up for grabs. Is that correct? Um, I I think that is a, a pretty um, accurate summation, and it is it is um, as you would expect. It's about access. And um, certainly during the Trump administration, you know, you had any number of members of Mar-a-Lago talking about how, you know, they they would, um, you know, go there for dinner or, um, you know, celebrations or whatever. And and that, um, you know, then President Trump would make himself available and, you know, he would come by the tables. And, you know, there was, you know, a little bit of a, um, as you would say, value added, um, you know, might not be, you know, you know, the free food that you're getting um, or, or the golf, but, um, you know, coming and having, um, you know, the president stop by your table, um, you know, that that's um, certainly a unique experience. Um, you know, as, as we go ahead into this political year, you know, we, we don't we don't know, you know, if, if that that will, you know, come back or if um, that will be, you know, if being the former president, if that, um, you know, is going to, you know, really encourage people to, you know, write checks for that kind of uh, amount of money. So um, what, one, one thing I have learned in, in researching this for four years is that um, you just, you could have never predicted um, I- any of this. And so I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to just guess where it would go. And so there's a federal case in the spring about the documents, supposedly very important documents that were stored at Mar-a-Lago. This has started a national firestorm controversy about these documents that were stored at Mar-a-Lago that supposedly former President Trump, according to prosecutors, wasn't supposed to have there. But here I'm thinking, how can we learn more through the discovery process and through a possible case? Is it possible that we can learn more about, say, Mar-a-Lago, maybe the president's dealings through this particular case? It, it, I think it is possible. Um, you know, I think that there's, um, you know, leading up to that and looking at, you know, there's been some work and, and, and the book kind of goes into the documents, um, you know, you know, he his responsibility of determining, you know, what is classified, what isn't classified, um, the, um, the National Archives saying, you know, that's federal property. Um, and, and all of that is a question of, you know, the lines blurring in terms of, um, you know, what's allowed and, and what's not allowed, you know, as, as the president of the United States. So those hearings are, um, there's actually some going on right now, just in terms of, of, of who's going to be witnesses um, in, in South Florida. But I think that those will really get geared up in May. And I, I feel like we're probably likely to hear um, Trump's legal team um, continue to question um, legal aspects of um, the FBI going into that property, um, some of the areas they went into. Um, um, President Trump at the time had said, you know, that they, um, well, a- actually it was post his presidency, but he talked about. Um, you know, them rifling through um, Melania's um, lingerie drawers and um, his son's um, room, leaving it in a mess. And, um, you know, so I I think, you know, one tact it seems like, um, you know, will be them um, questioning, you know, the professionalism and the legality of the search. Um, And then the the National Archives, again, questioning whether he he had the right to to store those. And, And some of those um, seem as though they were stored um, a, a bit haphazardly and places, you know, where you would have um, chemical cleaning um, um, chemicals uh, nearby and, um, you know, place, places that might not measure up to the um, National Archive standards. Mary Shanklin, author of American Castle. Gosh. If you want to check it out, it is widely available. Well, it is a fascinating oh, topic. Mary, it has been so wonderful to speak with you. I am so um, jealous of the students who get to hear your lectures. They are some. They are some lucky kids. I hope they realize I am that. I'm going to remind them that you said that. <laughs> we'll yeah. send you a copy of this. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to say, honestly, I've been interviewed a, a bit in this, but, but you two are the most studied of anybody that, that's interviewed me on this. And coming from a journalist, that, that is high praise. I, I really appreciate the homework that you guys did. Thank you so much. Oh, that means a lot. You. And thank you for watching Florida's Fourth Estate. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6+. Plus.